topic that we're going to touch tonight is, is something that is very uh, close to our hearts. And uh, as part of my work as director of the Ohio Latino Affairs Commission, I'm also part of the Human Trafficking Committee. And also I'm engaged with an organization in Columbus called the Central Ohio Rescue and Restore <coughs> Coalition. This is an organization that has taken upon itself to deal with the issue of human trafficking for a long time. And because I work with them and I represent them and many of, of these uh, issues, I wanted to use the presentation that we use um, with the group to cover the topic of human trafficking. The most important thing that I want to say is forget about dinner, forget, forget about homework, put away your cell phones, and I beg you for the next 20 or 30 minutes, be here with me. Because the chance that you're having today to talk about this very critical issue is not something that will come your way every day. And whether you know it or not, in your lifetime you may have already been near or experienced someone that may have been trafficked, or you may have that experience again in the future. So please be with me and, and let's explore this subject together. Of course, human trafficking, it is a modern day slavery. And it's something that we have a hard time thinking about because wow, nowadays, this time and age, that cannot be happening. In fact, it's the exploitation not only of women and children, but also of men. Not only for sexual purposes, but also for labor purposes. In fact, it's the second and the largest and fastest growing criminal industry in the world. If I told you that annually $31.6 billion are produced by human trafficking, would you be surprised? Did you think that it was maybe a couple of millions? No. $31.6 billion a year are, tra are, are the results of human trafficking. So we're talking about a very, very huge amount of money. So before we go any further, and I'm not going to quiz you on this one, but I want you to maybe take a look at some of these questions. And in your own minds, make your own personal assessment. What do you think you know about human trafficking? And let's see what answers do we discover after our presentation tonight. Do you think it is a problem of underdeveloped countries or uneducated people? Do you think it is a problem or is it not? Is it something that people call upon themselves? What is human trafficking? To build a frame of reference, I will quickly mention the, the Trafficking Victims Protection Act of 2000. And what is important about this is that prior to that, there was not really a structured legislation that would cover issues dealing with human trafficking. So this became very important because it provided very clear definitions about the differences between sex trafficking and labor trafficking. And the reason why this act was so important is because it, it made some very specific goals and it clarified the issues, not only from, for the international arena, but also it protected the victims and it helped um, to deal with the situation that they would face once they arrived in the US and with the federal government. So there are two main categories that this um, act considers. We talk about labor trafficking. What are some of those examples? Domestic service. How many of you know that nice Mexican lady that is supposed to be the nanny at a house? How did she get it here? Is she receiving what she was promised? How did that story happen? What about the sweatshops and the factory lines? Begging, in many, many areas, these children or older people or handicapped persons are used for begging and producing money. Agricultural <coughs> work, mining, the brick kills, and the child soldiers. When we talk about sexual trafficking, then Maybe this is a subject that we may know a little bit more about when we're talking about what we currently hear and what comes to mind when you think of sexual trafficking. The prostitution, the pornography, scraping, lap dancing, any old, and all of those things that are uh, related one way or another with sexual activities. It is a huge number, the amount of people that are victims of human trafficking. Stop for one second and think, how many people come to school in this campus? How many 
thousands of people are we here? Now compare that number to 800,000 men, women, and children who are trafficked across borders every year. Can you grasp that number? This is a huge problem that we need to be aware about. In fact, according to this uh, space organization estimates, they are telling us that there are 27 million people around the globe that live under slavery. The sad thing, as we suspect, is that a lot of those are women, girls, and children, minors. So this is something that is very serious. As you look at this map, you see how it has a bunch of little numbers and errors. Each one of those errors represents a specific case or cases showing routes into and out of the United States used by human traffickers. Each one of these errors represents at least one confirmed case of human trafficking. And this is very revealing. <coughs> when you stop to say, wow, this is really happening very close to home. It is not a problem that I hear about India. It is not the problem that I hear about Thailand, China. It is a problem among us, in our communities, in our state, and in our nation. And that is why awareness is so critical and so important. So let's look for a second at something that may just pass unsuspected by us, and that is labor trafficking. Many of us go to restaurants, many of us see, you know, through the little windows of the restaurant and we see all these people working in the kitchen and, and, and we say, wow, that's cool, you know, these Mexicans, they make good food in Chinese restaurants, right? Um, we see all these people that are dedicated to these usual jobs in labor and, and we never stop to think, how did they get here? How did they get that job? Who brought them here? What is the price of this job? Then we also think about some of the other examples, picking up crops, cleaning jobs, working in assembly lines, in factories, construction work. There are a lot of vulnerability factors that force people into this area of work. And many of them, as I said, come here with a unfulfilled promise of coming to America if you come here, we will get your papers. We will help you get established. We have great contacts. We have good employers. You will be able to make enough money to live well, to save, to send back home. And of course, you know, you'll pay us a little fee to get you there, but don't you worry, because you are going to be making so much money, you're going to do just fine, just great. Trust me. Don't worry about it. Other situations that bring us uh, to that scenario is discrimination and corruption. People that will say, well, you know, if, if you don't come and you don't do this for me, um, we're going to hurt your family. Has any of you ever heard of anyone that came here under the pretense that I need to do something to help my family? And maybe many times we don't know that there's a threat behind all of this. Well, we're going to take away uh, whatever they have left. Or the family has invested the value of the home where they live to help you buy that uh, ticket, to get you across the border, to get you in here. So you are obligated to pay back or else. 